Hey guys, here we're going to learn how to enhance our postcard to make all the images match a little better and make the background more interesting. So after you have done the blending modes template, what you're going to do is experiment with a color overlay to make all of these different images mesh a little bit better. So all of my clipping mask layers are here and they're all going on top of Connecticut. And just like in the screencast before, you've erased the bits that um, overlapped onto the letters you didn't want them to. So what I'm going to do is make a new layer and then I'm going to fill it with a solid color. Generally you want to do one of those light blues or light oranges. You can copy and paste the um, hex code from the document or you can just guess and do any light, light blue or orange. Then hit OK and fill the layer. What you're going to do next is go through the blend modes and see which one you like. And remember that we can change the opacity and lower it down so that way it doesn't affect it too much. We just want to create this overall kind of sense of the images belonging together. So I really like this soft light effect. So I'm going to go ahead with that. And what I like the most is that it's not actually um, changing the white part of the Connecticut outline that I had done previously. All right, so now it did change the background, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is play with the opacity of that and just see if I like it a little bit lower. And I can just toggle the bar back and forth. And then if I'm not even sure what it's doing, I just check the eye and I can go back and forth and kind of look at all my images just to see how it's affecting them. And overall, I think it's working really well. Now, if you don't like how it's affecting the entire image and you don't like that it's doing the background as well, what you would have to do is create a layer mask. So right here, and I'm going to use my paintbrush and use black and white to eliminate the background. Okay, so this brush is pretty big, but it's a good one to start with to get rid of all that big junk. And then I can use my bracket and I can just kind of go around and over. Now, if I change the edges of this, instead of being hard to be a soft, then it will feather it a little more. And you can see that's just a nice softer effect. So if I do end up going over the shadow of the letters a little bit, then it's not as drastic as that hard edge brush. So I definitely recommend the soft edge. And this is not necessary. You can keep the colored effect on the background too. Now I did go over the letters just a little bit so I can go back with my white and just make sure that I have all the letters painted in. All right, so I'm just doing it really rough. You might even want to zoom in, get in between the letters and all of that. But overall, when you look, the colors now match just a little bit better. They all have that slight blue kind of haze to them. All right, so now the background of this postcard is pretty boring. If you go back to your document where I have examples, you'll notice that all of these have um, an image in the background. Now you can decide, well, not all of them, but you can decide this one is a little more pictorial, this one's a little more simple, this one has a collage of images, and this one has just one kind of landscape image. So you, you can feel free to choose whichever one you want. And this one is probably going to be the simplest, and then obviously the solid color one. But what I want you to think about is the space you have. So if you happen to choose a shorter named state, then your words are going to be taller and they're going to fill up more space. However, I chose Connecticut and if you're all choosing Connecticut, it's so long that the words are small and there's so much negative space around. So what I'm going to do is definitely put an image in the background because there's so much space here and I want to fill it with an image because otherwise it's just too empty and too boring. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can fill it with just an image or you can fill it with the state outline and then fill that with an image and then maybe have a solid color um, on the edges around. So either, either method you choose um, is fine, but we, we don't want to copy mine, you want to add your own flair to it. 
But the most important thing is to put that blend mode over the images so that way they all look the same. Now, something that I didn't quite explain in our template, but I just want to go over real quick if you happen to want to play with this. Maybe one of your images still doesn't quite look right and it's really sticking out. So I'm going to go with this first image because it does kind of stick out a little bit. So I would find that first one. It's generally going to be your layer one if it was your first le um, letter. And then I can adjust it with the adjustment modes. So the adjustment modes are the little half circle and I can um, go over any of the ones that you saw in the slideshow. So I'm going to start with brightness contrast. That generally is a great one to start with. And then hue and saturation would be the second one. So what I can do is slide this bar up and the brightness of the image will increase. You don't want to go too much. Contrast down. Verse up. And then what I can do is add another effect. And you'll see how those colors change. And I'm actually going to hit the exposure because that's really the issue that I'm seeing. So I'm going to increase the exposure so then it overall gets a little brighter. Okay, and that's better. Now there is that really fun one that I explained in the slideshow, the selective color. So if you wanted to just change the blue of the sky, then you can. And you can kind of increase just the blue or decrease the blue. You can see how it's changing. But then you can in, like increase and decrease the different colors that mix with that blue to make it. And these are much more subtle. But if one of your colors just isn't quite working right. Now, the bad thing about the adjustment layers is that if you were actually editing this layer 2 instead of layer 1, and all of these were up above layer 2, so I'm just going to drag layer 2 down below and you'll see that it has changed, okay? So now all of these adjustments have affected layer two because the adjustment layers affect everything that's underneath it. So if I drag this above them, you'll see it switch back, okay? So the way to fix that is you would just have to use the layer mask that's right here and already created, and you would just have to go in and erase the parts of it that you didn't like. So you can see the little black showing, and if this were on layer two, so I'm just gonna drag it down again, and I didn't want it covering layer two, then all I would have to do is just wipe away the effects over that layer. And then it would only affect that first picture, okay? So if you happen to have to edit one of these and it's editing all the ones that were underneath it, that is what you'll have to do. You'll have to go back in with the layer mask and you'll have to edit, um, erase the effect off of the previous layers. Okay. Alrighty. So that is a quick little tidbit on adjustment layers. And you don't necessarily have to use them for this, but it is a really great way to enhance your pictures um, even better. All right. So what I'm going to do is just going to find a quick landscape. Google. And I want to make sure that it's a large image. Oops, large. Okay. And I saw this kind of preset right here, autumn, and that's one of my favorite seasons. So I'm going to go ahead and click that because I think that's a really a great idea. And automatically I'm drawn to this one just because the way my eye is led through that picture. Let's just try copying it first and see if it's big enough. It's, it'll save a step if we just open it now. All right, so what I'm going to do is click down on the background layer, so that way when I hit Command-V, Control-V, it's going to paste down here. But if I were selecting layer 7, it would um, paste up there. So I'm going to save myself a step and paste it down below. So I just hit Command-V. All right, so there we go. And the image is large enough already. I don't 
need to um, do an extra step and save and download and all that. So try to copy and paste first just to see if that'll work because that's much easier. So what we're going to need to do is decrease the size of this background image because I don't really get a lot of detail from it and I want to see more. So what I'm going to do is free transform, command, control T or use that alt button if you are in photo P. So now what I can do is just drag the corner or I can use the percentage up here. First I'm going to hit the lock button and then I'm going to type 80 just a little bit. Um, by a little bit just so I don't go too small. So 80, I've still got plenty of room around. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump to 50. And then drag it and see, 50 looks a little bit too small. So I'm going to jump up to 55. And that looks good, so I'm going to hit return or enter. Or I can hit the little checkbox here. And then I'm just going to use my arrow key to nudge it up until it fills the whole scene. Now this is very bright, very busy. It's hard to see my greetings from and it's contrasting with my Connecticut word just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take layer 8, my new background, and I'm going to lower the opacity. Now the background color layer behind it is gray, and if I want the colors to show just a little better, I'm going to fill it back with white, and you'll see how that changes the overall brightness of the picture. And I'm going to just play with the opacity here until I get something I like, the other option is to use a blend mode, and I can fill this with an orange. I want to go with orange because in fall there's a lot of orangey colors. And I'm just going to fill that layer, and then I can set this to an overlay or something to enhance that image to be what I need. Soft light, again, that's the one I had chosen up here. Soft light tends to be a fan favorite for me. And I just want to kind of neutralize the colors a little bit. I'm going to increase the opacity here just to see. And there's no rhyme. Um, there's no correct way to do this. It's just about fiddling with the numbers until you get something that works for you. And what I have here is a pretty high contrast because I had overlaid these with blue and then this with orange. And if you like that, great. I'm gonna actually try to fill this with the blue just to see what happens, because I'm not really liking this. And again, any light blue color. This one's a little more teal. Fill that. Yeah, I think I like that effect a little better. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna go with that for now. Now the other cool thing that you can do is add a texture layer on top of this to make it look a little more like a, a crumpled up postcard. So if you go into the classroom, down at the bottom in the material section, you'll see a Photoshop brushes slash textures um, little section. And the paper textures, or maybe even the wood textures is where you want to go, but I'm going to go to paper textures. It's going to open a folder I've created in my drive and then you're just going to download one that you think would be interesting. So automatically looking at these, the ones with the flowers probably wouldn't be the best to add on top of an already busy image. This one might create a really interesting texture. Any of the colored ones will add that layer of color over it as well, so then I might need to delete the blend mode um, solid fill layer I did, which is fine. I'm just going to do this one because I see that kind of paper texture. So what you can do is double click it, and then you're just going to hit that download button. And if you open it and you don't like it anymore, then don't download it. Use the back arrow, find something else. But I'm going to use this download arrow. It's going to go download into my downloads folder, my downloads bar, and I'm going to go back into Photoshop. And then what I could do is either drag and drop or open, um, open in place, whatever method you want to do. Now it opened in a new window, so I'm just going to drag it and drop into my scene. And what you'll notice is that the layer is vertical in orientation and not quite matching. So what I'm going to do is free transform it and rotate it to be horizontal. And I could just use the angle up here to make it a little easier and precise and then I'm just going to hit enter. 
I'm going to drag it so it matches that corner, and then I'm going to enlarge it so it fills the whole seam. And it's okay if it extends a little bigger. Once you've got that, you're going to hit return or enter or your little check mark. And now I'm going to set this as a blend mode so that it blends over what's below it. Notice where it is in my layers panel. It's not affecting my words because it's underneath them. So I have it right above my background layers because that's the only thing I want it to blend because the blend mode affects everything underneath it. So I'm going to just cycle through them and see whatever one works best for me. Now some of them you'll notice the texture of the paper shows through just a little better. Some of them it doesn't quite show. And again, no right or wrong, just about choosing the one you like. I kind of really like this one. I can really see the effect. So let me do that. I'm going to actually increase the opacity of this layer to see how they interact. I'm going to get rid of this one to see what it does. I do still like this because it's increasing the highlights here. So I'm going to keep that. But what I'm going to do is lower this opacity just a little bit so I can see a little bit more of my background. I can still see that texture effect but overall I really like that. So that's um, an interesting effect that is working for me. What I'm thinking is I'm going to overlay the Connecticut outline and then have this kind of design be behind it. And then the Connecticut map I can just kind of keep as a map. So I need to go back to the internet and find a map of Connecticut. Now, whatever one you want to use is up to you. Um, if you want a kind of topo like more um, topographic one with the landmarks and greens, if you want to have the zones, anything, um, it's all up to you. None of this is really giving me the vibe I want. So I'm going to go see Team Math Outline and see if that comes up with anything different. You just always want to change the verbiage you're using alter it just a, a smidge here and there, add a word, delete a word, just see what happens. And Basically I'm just looking through and seeing what's going to spark my interest. I think I'm going to go with this one. Now we'll see if the image is going to be big enough, so I'm just going to right click and copy and go back to Photoshop or Photo P and Command V, Control V, paste it in. And I'm going to slide it, oops, wrong way. Slide it around until it's where I want. And it's a little bit big, so I'm going to free transform it. My lock is selected. I'm going to decrease down to 90, hit enter, and again, keep moving it until I get it where I want. So now the problem is that this layer is hiding the hard work that I did behind. So now if you like this map, it actually works really well because of the blues from my image and maybe all that work I just did is no longer going to be in use because I just like this simple um, map in the background. And that's fine. That's the part of designing, the frustration of designing that, you know, is the biggest frustration. And it, there's nothing wrong with it. You came up with a better idea the second time around, use it. Okay? So I'm just going to keep kind of thinking about this. So I'm going to toggle back and forth. And now what I can do is create a layer mask on this layer and edit this without destroying it. So then I can go back. So I'm going to use the paintbrush with black and then I can just eliminate what's behind that actual map. So I'm just going to very loosely go over because I can always go back with my white and I'm going to make this a little smaller, switch to white, and then I can go back over the actual map area that I want to keep and then it will get a little brighter because it will come back. Alright, I can make my brush a little smaller and go into the tail area and that creates an overall um, cool effect. Now I'm going to switch back to black and just get a little bit closer with the smaller brush. And again, I have a soft edge on because it just gives you a little bit more um, flexibility. 
then anywhere you accidentally went too much over the map, you just go back with white and make it come back. So that is the reason we don't always want to use the eraser because sometimes you can't fix a mistake you realized after the fact. And then I can zoom in and go really close and fix all those little areas. Um, but that is how you edit your background. And I want everyone to have kind of a unique composition. Come up with your own thing. If you end up not liking this and you want the whole image back, then I can actually delete the layer mask. I have the white selection on the layer mask and I can hit delete. And then it goes back to um, the original image. And then I could maybe go and delete these layers because I like this vibe better. Now I need to go back and look at my text. Did, is greetings from in the right spot? Do I need to lower it? Do I need to make it bigger? And then once you're all done and you've got your composition all set, you're going to save as, or if you're in PhotoP, you're going to export as a JPEG, or you could do a PNG if the JPEG option is not working for you. But make sure that you are not submitting a PSD. And here is where you want to make sure that you have your naming format intact. If you didn't do it in PhotoP, you'll have to just re-edit the name after the fact, which is fine. And I've got my JPEG selected, I've got my name, and I'm noticing where I'm saving it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. This is what I'm going to upload to the classroom.